As a result of the midterm election, the DFL will control the Senate with a one-vote majority, 34 to 33. Last week, the newly elected and re-elected DFLers gathered to begin organizing themselves for the 2023 legislative session, including electing a majority leader, president of the Senate, and chairs of the Tax and Finance Committees. I have the honor and privilege to be the new Senate majority leader. I take that role very seriously. I, um, it is, I take it uh, seriously and with great um, dedication to the state and to my colleagues um, to make this work. We, are, we were given the trivecta and we are here to show that we are ready to lead. One of the reasons why I want to be president, one is because I believe I have the skills and qualifications by which to uh, navigate the rules and tradition and balance that with how do we make sure that we're having a robust discussion on our Senate floor to benefit Minnesotans. So that is to make sure that there are guiding principles that can lead uh, our caucus, but also the minority as well, because I believe important, robust discussion includes all of us. And even though I have the skills and qualifications, it was not lost on me that Minnesota has never had a, a Senate president of color. I will be serving um, as his partner, um, the Senate President Pro Tem. I'll be very active on the floor helping members with their bills and understanding the rules. We have very many new members and we want to make sure when they go to the floor that they're going to be well prepared in um, presenting their bills. Uh, in addition, um, uh, I've served on the tax committee in both the House and the Senate for uh, decades, actually, uh, four years in the House as, um, as the tax chair, and now after 20 years in the Senate, I will be the tax chair. I'm honored to be selected by the caucus to chair the Senate Finance Committee, which I've served on for a number of years, and, and I'm excited. I think we can put together a good budget that reflects the values of the people of Minnesota and is going to serve the people of Minnesota well and intend to include the entire Senate, the entire caucus, everybody involved in this, and as, as both um, Leader Dietzik and President Champion said, we do have a very diverse caucus, and I'm very excited to be working with them. Joining me now in the studio is the new Senate Majority Leader, Senator Carrie Dietzik. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. First off, congratulations on your election to become the Senate Majority Leader. You were elected to the Senate in 2012 following a special election to replace Senator Larry Pogamiller, who was the Majority Leader from 2007 to 2011. Is there something in the water in your area of Minneapolis? I don't know if there's something in the water, but you know, both Larry and I grew up in an area where there was a strong work ethic. It was a very um, working class family area, middle class family area, and we were both, um, you know, we just, it's an area where public service is important to everybody. Everybody gets involved in helping the community, and we had a lot of civic pride. And so I think it just, it, it runs deep in Northeast and Southeast Minneapolis. What was your appeal to the caucus? Why do you think they chose you as their leader? You know, we had a good discussion. We had a very, um, lots of questions, lots of questions on what we want to see happen. And, you know, we had great candidates and great conversations with our neighbors at the door. And we heard a lot from Minnesotans. We heard that they want us to get our job done. That we have a lot of issues facing us from people who can't afford rent. More people are going to the food shelves. People can't find childcare. They can't find child, they can't afford childcare. They want us to get things done and Minnesotans want help. And we are ready to lead and we are ready to step up and help Minnesotans and we're just excited to do that. You noted in a recent press conference that the Senate DFL caucus is now the most diverse in history. You have 14 new members. 11 of those new members are women. Um, now the Senate DFL caucus is majority female. Uh, 19 women to 15 men. What does all of this mean? It's pretty exciting. It's very exciting, and, and it gets back to where, you know, women were stepping up and more women are stepping up to do the job. Um, our caucus looks like the state of Minnesota. We have a very diverse caucus. Uh, we have senators from International Falls to Southern Minnesota, and we're just ready to lead. We are, everybody is excited. We want to get to work. We've heard our constituents, and we are going to continue to listen to them, work with them, work with the governor, work with the House, and get things done. There's also historic 
diversity of backgrounds and experiences in the new DFL caucus, but your majority is only one single vote. That means that any new policy or budget proposals either need united caucus support or you need to have bipartisan support. Will this be a challenge? Does it mean that the scope of accomplishments may be narrower than people might think? When we were elected in the trifecta in 2013-14, we did all-day kindergarten, we passed medical cannabis, and we did the freedom to marry. So we know we can get things done. We know we have that slim majority. We also know that there are so many things we agree on and there's so many things we want to get done for the state of Minnesota that we're going to have to have open and transparent conversations with each other, with our communities, um, but we're ready to come to work and lead and do things for Minnesotans. The last time that Minnesota had the so-called trifecta, meaning that the legislature and the governor's office are all the same party, and it was the DFL, was back in 2013-14. Before that, it was the late 1980s. So it is kind of a rare thing. What do you think the voters are saying? They told us they want us to get our job done. They are tired of gridlock. They want stability. They want civility. They want to have those thoughtful conversations. And there's issues that are facing us from, you know, the kids have had a hard time going to school in COVID the last few years. We have uh, the lowest counselor ratio in the state. We have um, special education funding deficits. There's work that we need to do. And we're ready to get here, get the work done, and help Minnesotans. What will your leadership style be like? Are you a collaborator? Are you a deal maker? Do you like the big picture? Do you like the details? Like, what, what are you going to look like in leadership? I, I like to get things done. And we, I think we all are coming here. We want to get things done. Um, all of the senators were sent here and elected to get things done. And so I, like, I look forward to working with all of them. Um, learning more of what they need in their community and again finding what can we agree on. I think there's a lot that we can agree on to move forward for Minnesota so I look forward to working with all of them to get the job done. You are the next generation of a political legacy in Northeast Minneapolis. Your father Walt was a police officer and then Minneapolis City Council for 22 years and then Park Board for 12 years. Before running for the Senate, you worked for the late Senator Paul Wellstone, whom you often quote. Uh, how might your history that is steeped in the city and the state inform your leadership of the Senate? So my dad was um, very active in the community. My family was very active in the community. We grew up being active in the community. Um, I also had an uncle, who, great uncle, who was mayor of St. Cloud, another great uncle who was a sheriff in Monomah County. So public service is embedded in my family. We, we believe in that. We want to help people. Um, I was telling the story that um, my dad used to make us do Meals on Wheels before there was Meals on Wheels. We, he, we would deliver meals and Easter lilies to families at Easter time. We didn't want to do it. We were going into the public high-rise buildings. You know, we had other things to do. We were young kids. We didn't want to do it, but he made us do it. And it showed us that, you know, families can struggle and that we should be grateful for what we have because no matter how bad we feel at that moment, somebody else is having a harder day. And, and it showed me that little things mattered because they so appreciated when we came to the door to bring them, you know, sometimes it was just coffee and these flowers, um, but it made their day. So it showed me little things mattered and that to take time out of the day to help people. And that again instills the public spirit and the public service in me. And I often quote my former boss and say, we all do better when we all do better. And I think that also means the Senate too. So when the Minnesota Senate does better, Minnesota does better. And we all want to help Minnesotans. It shouldn't matter where you live. Every Minnesotan should have the opportunity to succeed. And I think that um, spirit of helping others isn't just helping others across Minnesotans, it's helping the Senate be better. And I think we can do better because when we all do better, we all do better. And so with that said, with your one vote majority, Will you reach across the aisle? Will you still try to bring the Republicans along on some of the proposal, 
proposals, the legislative ideas in the coming session? I think, you know, we had some agreement last year at the end of session, and unfortunately they weren't passed, so I think we'll kind of look at those. We, we, sometimes we pass more bills. They're just not the sexy bills, but we do pass bills, and we're all sent here to help our constituents, and so, you know, we have some things in the DFL that we ran on that we are going to move forward with from choice, starting with choice. Voter sent us here, that was a big, clear issue. So we're gonna lead on those issues, but you know, I think it's gonna be a collaboration because all of us wanna help Minnesotans. Is there gonna be any difficulty with the presumably rather large budget surplus that we have in terms of how to go forward? Or do you think that's gonna resolve itself over time? I think it'll give us an opportunity to have some great conversations on how do we best help Minnesotans. Senate Majority Leader Carrie Dietzik, thank you so much. Thank you.